shocking China Hollywood censorship and the First Amendment battle for hearts and minds. Wait for the beat. That's how we do it around here. We always wait for the beat to kick in. Here it is. There we go. And now we rock on out to the... Uh, did I say rock on out? <laughs> Today is a bring a cringe to work day. So I brought myself. <laughs> All right. That's terrible. So let's, let's get on with the show. China's Hollywood censorship strategy is soft power intended to subvert our First Amendment rights as Americans by using our own uh, <clears throat> free, free markets as the means to silence dissent. Well, that's one prevailing theory in what has occurred in the last decade is Hollywood finds itself more and more entangled in the need for China's approval to make the big bank overseas. Ooh. So we've got a report here. But we've got the wrong article image up here. We don't want article here up here. We don't want that. We don't want that. We've got the wrong article up, but we could fix that right now. I want to make sure that we cite the right sources because we're decent people, okay? We're decent. All right, there we go. <laughs> it took a little bit, took a little bit to to, to get to get there, uh, but that's a story that we're going to be highlighting from. <clears throat> this is from China Digital Times. A recent Pen America report made in Hollywood, censored by Beijing explains how Chinese authorities notoriously tight controlled over access to these financial rewards give it, gives the CCP mega sway over whether a Hollywood movie will be profitable or uh, or not and studio <laughs> studio executives I'm just trying to help you 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 just take this in studio executives know it beyond the raw binary of access or denial pen America explains Chinese authorities wield an array of more precise levers they can allow a greater profit share by including a film in the annual quota of 34 foreign releases excluding exclude it leaving the option of selling Chinese earnings rights for a lower flat fee or block it entirely more favorable financial terms are available to filmmakers willing to accept the closer control that comes with a giant production and they can control the timing of a film's opening relative to its global release public holidays or rival pictures. And they can restrict, allow a sister, undermine promotion, not least for favorable or unfavorable attention to state and other media. Underlying all of this is the threat of indefinite, unspoken inclusion on long, rumored <coughs> blacklists. And, you know, listen, if ever there was a time that suddenly I was making films, trust me, China would look back at all the stuff that I've, done and said and been like yo blacklist don't even don't even try that in my head we look back at your stuff man we look back at your stuff man that's a blacklist for you crucially these carrots and sticks can be deployed not only based on an individual's film's own content but on that of other productions by the same individuals or studios the hundreds of millions of dollars of leverage available against a major blockbuster can therefore extend to other productions or more diverse business interests. Though the PIN report does not cover television or online streaming, 
And this point was illustrated elsewhere last year by a BuzzFeed News report. Oh, gosh. I had to say those words. That Apple had instructed content producers for its Apple TV platform to avoid portraying China in a poor light. You know, because, you know, diversity for thee, but, uh, you know, we're literally selling our soul to people who, uh, you know, they're, they're Chinese, kind of. Nazis? Kind of? Kind? Yeah, yeah, kind of. Kind of the same. There's a lot of similarities. I'm just going to say that, I mean, a lot of the end results are getting to be a little bit, uh, they're, uh, very, very similar. A showrunner not working with Apple told BuzzFeed that this had become standard industry practice. They all do it. They have to do it if they want to play in that market. And they all want to play in that market. I mean, ha <laughs> ha! Who wouldn't? These are the folks that are leading the quote-unquote cultural revolution. These are the folks. Cultural revolution. Oh, we can talk about cultural revolutions another time. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. We won't. I, I, I'm thinking about how how should I how should I handle myself here. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know what? I'm, I'm going to stick to my script. I'm going to stick to the form because I'm a decent human being. So this is what Google News uh, says when you look for the phrase China, Hollywood, censorship, and the First Amendment. So from Variety, we got PEN America slams Hollywood and MPA on China censorship stance. PEN America slams Hollywood and MPA on China censorship stance. The MPAA has fought for the First Amendment. Okay, whatever. Uh, and then we get from what I had read to you. This was uh, five days ago. This other story, this is three weeks ago. Pen America slams Hollywood and MPA. China Digital Times did the report on how and why Hollywood self-censors for China. Hollywood reporter from two t days ago. This is kind of unrelated, but it's worth noting. TikTok to Trump. Ben violates Dubrosis and we simply have no choice. But to sue. I know, I know, I know, like, you know, we kind of look like traitors and all that, but, you know. The Hollywood Reporter allowed the Chinese government to track the location of better. Well, it, it's, it, well, it's just, there's a whole uh, mess of, of issues that really <coughs> come down to. Oh, here's the, the uh, I do have the Variety article here if you want to see here. Just recently, briefly, this was from, this is Rebecca Davis from August 5th, 2020. So this is three weeks ago, two or three weeks, whatever it was. Nonprofit Pen America on Wednesday issued a moral clarion, a moral clarion call. You know, I'm just going to say, even though I kind of agree with them, I just hate that moral clarion call appeal. Appeal to morality, man. There's uh, all kinds of pragmatic way, appeals that could be made here that would really uh, uh, dis, dis, uh, disempower a lot of uh, otherwise uh, demagogic type uh, folks out there today. So that whole moral clarion call, man. Come on, man to Hollywood to step up its efforts to resist Chinese censorship and increase transparency, criticizing studios on the MPA for appearing to defend free speech at home only when financially convenient. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they're not, they don't even defend speech, speech at home, actually. They're starting to act more and more like China. Even Hollywood is endorsing China values more and more. It's like, yeah, man, we, 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 we totally get why you would want to have the government be able to Declare people criminal based upon their thoughts alone. That sounds reasonable. Like, yeah, it's for a good cause. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, You know, uh, monopolistic uh, marketplaces that uh, have the uh, power to enforce a very strict moral code on human beings, even allowing corporations to track their employees off-site and make sure that their employees are the right moral people for their company totally cool totally that that doesn't i mean hey who who would ever do anything bad with those kinds of powers that's insane that's crazy talk man that's crazy talk yeah, the New York headquartered free speech advocacy group detailed the mechanisms by which China influenced decision making in Hollywood 
and offered recommendations for how to mitigate uh, pernicious complicity with one of the world's most censorship prone regimes in an unsparing 100 page report entitled Made in Hollywood Censors in Beijing. Let me, let me tell you fundamentally the biggest problem here. I'm just going to, I'm not going to get too deep into it, but I'm just going to say this. The fundamental problem here is that we all imagine that corporations and states, one, that corporations are not either, they're, they're not, well, in, in some form, they're fundamental extensions of states, and they most assuredly rely on the existence of states and state guns to protect them from their own crappy decisions that they make that hurt so many human beings in so many ways. <laughs> And uh, we're, we're coming to terms with uh, that reality that states, especially when you have major competing states, they can't really afford, China can't afford to allow this any more than the U.S. and China doesn't, but they can't really allow states to have any market influence they really they really can't they can't allow states to have influence in their markets especially when their markets are are defining culture we just you just can't have that and have nation states so if you would like a more ecumenical type of exchange amongst corporate whatever and creation and <coughs> Chinese companies being able to have things like uh, TikTok in American markets, well, then you have to get rid of nation states. If you're willing to do that, hey, great, I, I got a plan. I mean, I'm not going to tell them, I'm not going to say it now, but I have a plan. I have plans. If you watch my videos even on this channel, go back and watch. I got plans, man. Seriously, I got plans. So, essentially, we're just, we're just dealing with the reality of power that these massive international mega corporations, they cannot exist in circumstances in which nation states have come to some forms of uh, various... Uh, existential alignments <coughs> that are more like surface aware existential alignments and you see a lot of that going on across the world and certainly between america and china that's the case so there's a new reality out there folks and it may take the mega corporate international whatever's a while to understand but basically, the ones that are going to survive are basically going to be the ones that effectively serve the nation states that they choose to serve. Google will ultimately have to be an American company that serves fundamentally an American market and alphabet in general, or it will eventually just become irrelevant. It'll just become irrelevant or it'll the U.S. government may have to bust it up or nationalize it or whatever. It's it's going to have to do something. Nation states cannot afford to have this level of insecurity that allows them to have all of their world nation states having influence. And no other nation states would allow this as well, really. And again, if you, you want a more open world, a more ecumenical world, you have to get rid of nation states. Otherwise, nation states, they just they just can't afford it. It's just too risky. And that's what they're kind of discovering more and more. That's, that's the cold, hard reality. So I thank you for watching Shocking China Hollywood Censorship and the First Amendment Battle for Our Hearts and Minds. I mean, that's the name of the show. It's the one-off show. These are all one-off shows, but they're also Pico Talks and News. They're whatever. They're what else, what else. So listen, I just want to... I just want to close things out with this uh, little notation here. Thank you for engaging with this material episode of Issues. Remember, your views, your suppositions do not make yourself human, nor do they make yourself human as others. No humans were harmed in the making of the show, and we extend no wish to harm anyone who wasn't directly harmed or expected to harm this person, no matter how reprehensible we find your views. We will see you in the next Frico Talks, where Frico attempts to talk about the news without freaking out. I love you.